I wanted to find out if Hotwire can be as good or better than something like React.js. I want to know if I can build a form that looks good and make it feel super responsive. But I wasn't sure if Hotwire is up to it, so we're going to put that to the test. Hi, and welcome to the channel. My name is Caesar, and in this video, I'm going to convert a regular Rails form into a Rails 7 form with Hotwire's Turbo and Stimulus.js. We're going to see what the hype is all about and how far we can take it. If you want to learn more about Hotwire, I've got a few more videos on the channel that you might find interesting. And if you prefer to learn in a more structured way, I'm making a new course about Rails 7 and Hotwire, which you can check out here. So I've got a simple form here and a list of contacts. It's what you would expect to see in a regular Rails application. If I add a new contact, it will be added to the list of contacts and the total count will be incremented. So let's look at the code for a second. We've got one controller which does nothing special. It's initializing this contacts variable so we can list all the contacts and it also initializes a contact variable to be used on the form. So if we visit the new page, the instance variable, the contact variable, will be a new contact. But if we visit the edit page, it will find a contact based on the ID and set the contact variable to that record so we can populate the form with its details. Again, that's not different than what you would get with any version of Rails, but let's look at what is different. When I add a new contact, we'll see that the format of the request is of type TurboStream. Also, the post request is setting the turbo stream in the accept header. But inside a controller, we're not doing anything special with that turbo stream format. So what happens with the response is turbo drive merges the header of the response with the existing header and it replaces the entire body of the page with whatever comes back from the server. And that feels pretty responsive, but we can do better. We can take advantage of turbo frames to make the UI feel even more responsive. We can replace just a small part of the page instead of replacing the entire body. So obviously that will be faster because there's less data to be sent over the wire. Here's how we can do that. We wrap the list and the form inside the turbo frame tag. By wrapping them both, we establish a context in which all the link clicks and form submissions are intercepted and the response resulting from the click or the form submission will replace the entire frame. And that's all we need to do. When we submit the form now, you can see that the UI feels very responsive and you can also see that the alert is gone. Let's take a look at the response. And the new action responded with just the contents of the template, no layout. And inside that response, we can see the turbo frame tag which was used to replace the contents of the existing turbo frame tag. Everything outside the frame tag was ignored. And that's a limitation of turbo frames. You cannot update multiple elements on the page. The update is scoped to the frame that initiated the request. Another issue you might stumble upon is when you want to use a regular link inside a turbo frame. And by regular, I mean one that takes you to a different page. So in this example, if I click one of the names, I should be taken to a context details page. But instead, I see this, an empty page body. And the reason I see that is because clicking the link expected a frame back. And you can confirm that by looking at the console, you'll see a message that says something like this. Because the turbo frame tag that is expected wasn't found, it replaced the contents of the previous frame tag with nothing. So to fix this, you need to break out of the frame, and you can do that by adding a data attribute to the link, like so. If you click the same link now, you're going to be taken to the details page. Okay, cool. Before we fix the alert issue, let's look at one more thing. Let's say we're trying to add a new contact that is older than what we allow. In other words, let's see how validations work. I'm going to try to add a new contact named Joe, and I'll set his age to be 110, which is slightly bigger than the allowed 100. And as you can see, I get validations displayed nicely without doing anything. If we look at the response, we can see that the turbo frame is there with the expected content. So that's pretty nice because you have to do very little work to get all that. And let's take a quick look at how the edit and delete work. So to make the edit link go to a different page, I need to break out of the frame again using the data attribute we've seen earlier. And now I can edit and update the contact. But again, there's no alert at the top of the page. And the lead works without doing anything special because it's a redirect and then the entire contents of the template gets replaced. 
Okay, so now let's address the alert issue. When we create a new contact, the create method redirects to the new action, which renders the new template, which replaces the contents of the frame. But to update multiple sections of the page at once, we need to use Turbo Streams. And the way we do that is to respond to the Turbo Stream request with a set of Turbo Stream instructions. So we'll remove the redirect and we'll render the create Turbo Stream ERB template instead. And in this template, we're going to put some Turbo Stream instructions. Namely, we're going to first update the flash, then we're going to append the new contact to the list, then we're going to update the total count. And finally, we're going to clear the form. So let's see how this works. We're going to add the new record and click Submit. So we can see that all the elements on the page have updated correctly, and if we look at the response, the contents of the response is a lot smaller because it's exactly what we wanted to change on the page and nothing extra. So with Turbo Streams, we have a much more fine-grained control over the HTML that goes through the wire. And you can see it's not just the HTML that needs to be updated, but also instructions on how to do it, like update or append. Inside each Turbo Stream tag, there are actions which tell Hotwire how to use the template and targets to tell it where to put the content. Now, let's see how we can do the same for the update method. Currently, it redirects to the new action and it sends the whole page back. But we can do better. We can create a template for the update action just like we did for the create action and we can add a few instructions there. We'll need to update the alert message and then we gotta replace the contact row inside that list. Everything else stays the same. We don't need to update the counter nor do we need to reset the form. So that should do it. And if we try it in a browser, we can confirm that it does work. Now let's look at deleting records. Just to showcase the fact that there's another way of doing the same thing, instead of creating a template, I can inline the instructions inside a controller action. So I'll do render turbo stream and give it a list of instructions. The first one is going to be to update the alert. And the second one is to remove the element from the DOM and we identify it using the DOM ID method which lives in the action view record identifier module. That's why I've included the module here. And lastly, we need to update the counter. Now, let's try it. Clicking the delete link seems to work fine. It updates the alert, it removes the item from the list and updates the counter. And if we look at the response, we can see that there are three instructions in there. So all of it works using Hotwire now, but there's one small thing you can do to take it a step further in terms of user experience. And that is to add a dash of animation to it. It turns out you can hook into the before stream render event and add some animation to the elements. And that's what I've done here. It might not be the smoothest animation you've seen, but you get the idea. Now when I create a new record, the alert slides in and the table row animates in. And when I remove an item, the row animates out and the alert slides in. That's just to demonstrate it's possible. You can obviously go crazy in terms of animating the various elements that pop out and into the page. So that's how you can migrate your regular Rails form to using Hotwire. And if you're interested in learning more about Ruby and Rails, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting a lot more videos just like this one. Bye!